Hi y'all, this is Pam at Pink Dragonfly Wings, and I have another video for you. I've kind of cut everything in all so it won't take quite as long. Um, I'll start out first by saying this is a project that I saw on Scrapbooking With Me YouTube channel with Miss E. I've changed it up a little, it looks a little different, but this is my version of what she did as a zigzag journal page. So I'm going to start and explain the pieces. This is the base of our page. Now this page is going to be made so that it can be glued into a page, clipped into a page, or uh, washi taped here and make out into a fold out page. That decision is up to you as to what fits your scrapbook and what you want. Then we have five pockets that are going to basically go down one, two, oh goodness, two, excuse me, three, four, and five. And then we'll have five pockets for our tags. Okay? So are y'all feeling pretty crafty and ready to craft with me? So let me put these in backwards order because we are going to do them in backwards order. And as I do them, I will give you the, the measurements. So here are the ones that I have cut out. And I'm going to use old book pages to cover mine. So the first thing that we're going to start with is our base page. <clears throat> Decide which side of the page you want to use. I want it to be all text. I'm not real crazy about the pictures. So what we're going to do is let me find my gluing page. And my glue stick. I had it just a minute ago. And we're going to glue all the way every little speckle of this page with glue because we don't want it coming up later. That's the good thing about having my light on. I can go back and see if I've missed any pieces. Okay, so then once we get that done, we'll take it off of here, put our paper here. And as best we can, we are going to try to center this on here. Leaving space on all edges because we're going to fold in the pages and um, make a border on the back side. Get your bone folder. And make sure you burnish it really good on the edges. Now, this page has some little uh, curly cues, and I don't want to deal with those when I glue, so I'm just going to cut off a little bit of this. Uh, it's not going to matter. I just don't want it to curl up and everything. So then our next step, we have our page covered, is to cut these corners. And I cut these corners like this. I don't know what angle that is. I don't know. But I cut them off. Some people cut them off. Some people just leave them there. That's up to you and what, what you like to do. I find that when I'm doing a junk journal, the less stuff I can have in the corners, the better off it lays flat in my book. So... I try to make the corners as, as um, less bundlesome as possible. Now, I'm going to lay this back down, and we are going to glue all of these edges. Make sure you get them all glued down good. Move our glue sheet. 
Then we're going to take this and fold it over, creasing it. Fold this side over and crease it. The top and the bottom. Okay. So now, this is what it looks like from the back. But, we're going to make this particular page so that we can clip it into a junk journal. So, I want something on the back. I don't want it to look ugly like this. So, this is 8 by 5 And if I can find what I did with my papers. I have some brown paper. This is craft paper. And I just made some lines and printed it out and I keep it in my stash I have it in every color imaginable <clears throat> and I use this on a lot of my projects for um, for journaling paper so we're going to cut this at not quite five let's make it about four and a quarter because we want those edges to show so we'll do uh, four and three quarters let's try that four and three quarters save all of our pieces and then our other length was eight so we're going to take off a half an inch my little cutter is not quite that long so let's see what we have here we have eight and a half and we just need to cut off a quarter of an inch so what we're going to do is cut off this bottom line here. And just follow the line and cut it off and it will be fine. Okay, then we'll put this back over here. We'll make sure that it fits. Let's see, oh, we cut it a little too long. So we can cut that off a little bit more. Don't know what I was measuring. That is eight. We wanted to go the other way. You see why I have such a hard time with measurements. So we want it to be seven and three fourths. So we're going to go up two more lines. I love lined paper. So we'll cut this off right here. Make sure we did it right this time looks good so we want to ink it and today I'm using vintage photo ink distress ink from Tim Holtz one of my absolute favorite inks I love distress ink I use it all the time I ink with it I spray with it I, I water it down and die with it <laughs> I just love Tim Holtz distress dye and I'm sorry that I get a little loud when I'm doing my, my inking, but I really just enjoy inking. It's so fun, and it's kind of nice to hear the little flip of the paper, and it just looks really cool. Okay, so I'm going to leave that right there. Let's make sure our paper is straight up. Get our glue pad, or our glue paper again. And once again, we're going to go to all edges and everything in between. Now, I don't use super duper fancy expensive glue sticks. Uh, we live in a small rural town, so everything that we get has to either come from Walmart or it comes online. And uh, I think that page has just about seen its day. So we're going to glue this centered as best we can. Make sure that it's even, or at least even enough. Now then, we have our journaling space on the back of our journal page. Cover it really good with your berm, your phone folder. Make sure the edges are down really good. So now we have the back of our book, our page done. 
So now we're going to work on the front. I'm going to lay this aside and we'll do all of the inking on the other things in a minute uh, because it's easier to do it all at once than it is to do it a little bit here and a little bit there and a little bit here and a little bit there. So we're going to start with our first pocket. <coughs> And our, I number them, I number one, that tells me that's the front of the pocket. So that's where I want my paper to be. I'm not worried about the back. I'm worried about the front. So we're going to get our first sheet of paper. And I think that paper is this one. And we're going to... Make sure it fits. This is written in German or Russian or something else, so I don't know what it says. I just like the pretty flourishes they use in their writing. So, we will get another sheet of paper to use for our little glue pad. And we're going to glue. And in the process, I knocked off my glue stick. I tell you, sometimes, and it picked up all the little pieces of paper on the floor. So we're going to glue this down. Make sure we get our edges really, really good. All the corners, all the edges. Move that out of the way so it doesn't stick. We're going to use this as our front, so we're going to turn it over. Take our tag, turn it over, and as best we can, we're going to even it. Okay? And we'll put our, our little bone folder to work again. And on this one, I'm going to tear these papers with the paper tear, paper ruler, ruling, tearing ruler. There we go. I'll get it out in a minute because I like the kind of ruffledy edges that it gives. It just kind of makes it look old and worn. So, we're going to cut these all as best we can. Just tear them right off with that ruler. Now, they make tearing rulers for this. but And I bought one. I have a set, but I haven't quite mastered I see some people on YouTube that can tear off an eighth of an inch on, on their paper with that tearing ruler. And when I do it, it just, just doesn't work. Let's just say that. Okay. So, we have number one. <clears throat> and in a minute, we're going to glue these all down and we'll ink them and everything. That's number one. So let's, oh, and I forgot to tell you that this one is five inches this way, five inches this way, two inches this way. Then I line this up on my cutter and cut diagonal from the two inches to the five inches and just cut it off. I hope that makes sense. So we have that one. Now, I don't know why... This second one is so big, but it is. It's weird, but it works. So here's our second one. And we are going to put it on here. This one is going to be three and three quarter inches on this side. Six inches on this side. And of course, five inches on the, on the bottom, because that's how wide our page is. So, three and a quarter by six by five. This is our second tag. Now, like I said, I put the numbers on them because it's real easy to get these tags if they're not labeled in some way to get them all going the same direction, which is fine if you want it to look that way. But this one is not going to be that way. <clears throat> so, uh, I'm going to turn that over. We are going to get our gluing paper. And you always glue on the side that you write on. So 
that makes it easier for me to keep up with exactly what I've got, what I'm doing, and I don't get them mixed up and wrong. So, I'm going to put this right here at the edge because that way I'll get the treble clefs and all of that stuff on that music and it just looks so pretty. So, <clears throat> we're going to use it that way. We're going to... Now this, I had a very dear band director friend. My husband was an ex-band director in the great state of Texas. And uh, I sent out a, a call for some old music paper. And one of our dear friends responded and sent me this beautiful, beautiful old printed music paper. And it is very old. And it is very... Um, flaky. So I may have to cut the end of that one. It's just not enough room. But we can cut this side. And it's, like I said, it's a beautiful paper. And when it comes off, it comes off just smooth as butter. It's so nice. Let's go ahead and cut this side. Or tear this side. We're not really cutting. We're going to tear this apart. I'll leave my pages intact as much as I can because I never know what my next project is going to be and what size I'm going to need that paper to be. So if I can leave it, I try. And then we'll pull this up. There we go. And we decided we would just cut this off of the bottom because it's it's so brittle. And it's, this is the bottom, and on these first four little pockets, it's not going to matter. So, okay. so there. If you have some of these little nubbins and you don't like them, get you a little sanding block like this and just sand down, and it just takes those little nubbins right off. And they look so cool. And I put that on backwards, didn't I? I sure did. Even though I had it marked. But that's okay. We're going to leave it. And not worry about it. Okay. So there is our pocket number two. Get all my little nubbins off of here. And we're going to go with number three. This pocket is going to be four and a half inches, one inch by five inches. And this is number three. So we're going to do it with a piece of dictionary page. And the main reason I'm using that is because I used the dictionary page on the base page. And putting it at number three kind of breaks it up a little bit, so it's not quite so, so, dictionary page, dictionary page, you know. So we're going to do this one. We're going to turn it. We're not going to use that one. That's my template. We're going to get this one. We're going to put our paper on this side this time, so we're going to turn it over and glue. Sometimes I wonder how I even manage to get up out of bed by myself. It seems like I fly by the seat of my pants like most of the time. And I glued the right side. <laughs> Wasn't sure there for a minute. Let's make sure that's even. Pretty good, pretty good. Get our bone fold up. it down and let's tear. Very good. Are all of y'all getting ready for Thanksgiving and travels and things? 
I hope so. We are. My son and lovely daughter-in-law. And we don't know which grandchildren are coming. We have nine. Two live with us. So we think they'll be here. <laughs> and then I'm going to gonna do a little sandy thing right there because that just kind of came off weird okay there is pocket number three so now we'll do pocket number four this one they're getting smaller this one is three and a half on this side by three-fourths on this side again by five we're gonna do this one <coughs> excuse me, out of a page of an old uh, phone book. And so this is my side I'm going to glue because that's where my number is. So I'm going to go ahead and glue this. When these get a little smaller, they work better. They work just fine without the glue sheet on the back because it doesn't matter. So we'll center that right in there. We'll burnish it down just a little bit. And we'll tear this one. Also, anyway, we have my son and daughter in law have seven children, and three of those children, well, Two children live in another state. And so I don't think they'll get to be here because it's just still just such a short time. My grandson is serving in the National Guard and looking to be deployed sometime early this next year. And uh, so we worry about him and... Uh, the other one I think will probably get to come at Christmas, but I don't think she'll get to come at Thanksgiving. And then we've got two that have recently married. There's pocket number four. And we have two that are currently pregnant. So we don't know if they're going to get to come or not. It depends on when that baby makes up their mind. So we're ready for our last pocket. This is the smallest one. Um, this little pocket is two inches this way, three-fourths of an inch this way, five inches this way. And we're going to put it on here and glue. So we're going to make a turkey and dressing and all the fixings and all that stuff and whoever comes gets to eat. So... Now, this page is just a little bit short for the length of this pocket, but that's okay because I'm going to show you what we're going to do with it. It's on the front, and I tend to not decorate these a whole lot because we're going to put tags in there. <clears throat> and so, but this front little pocket, I always have to put something on. Have that one. Well, twirly twirly. And then we have that one. And then once again, I'm just going to cut off these little nubbins on the end because, like I said, I just cannot maneuver that ruler to tear that little bitty piece. So. I just gave up. I was wasting way too much time on it. So, there is our fifth tag. Now then we get to attach them. First, we're go well, goodness, excuse me. I've kind of had sinus and allergies, and every now and then I just get the hiccups, and it's really weird and crazy, so I apologize. All right. Let's start with the bottom, and let's ink all of these up. We're just going to ink right around the edges. We've already done the back of this one. Well, that's just wonderful. Oh, well. 
it's a junk journal, right? So that adds to the junk journalness. I tell you, I ink like I paint. And if I'm painting, I guarantee you at the end of the day, you will know every color that I used while I was painting because it is somewhere on my body. And I just, I try so hard to be neat and it just doesn't work. Okay, so now we'll do our edges of our pockets. You really only need to do the, the top three sides because that fourth one is going to be, the bottom one here is going to be hidden. And so you don't have to, to worry about that one as much. And that one's going to fit about right there. Get our second one. I love, love this dark brown paper. It is just so gorgeous. I don't know what I'm going to do when I used it all up. I have to go back begging my band director friends again, I guess. So we'll do that one. Do our third one. Oh, don't. I just said we didn't have to do that, you know. Now we'll do our fourth one. Get them all inked up and pretty. And I love making this particular project with these book pages because they're all so very different. They're different shades, they're different fonts, they're they're just it they're just really neat to work with. Now, on this last one, this is our last one that's going to go at the bottom. And since it's going to go at the bottom, we need to ink the bottom. This is the only one that it's important that we ink. Okay. Put some. <clears throat> okay, and then this is kind of a preview of how it's going to look. So we'll take our pockets get my art glitter glue and we're going to glue. We only glue the outside edges. Now, I say that, I'll explain in a minute. <clears throat> the corner of this first pocket and the corner of your page meet together, go right down the side and it should fall right into place where it needs to be. Okay, now in a minute we're going to put tags in here. If you want a short tag like this, then you're going to need to put glue on the bottom of this so that it doesn't go all the way through. But we're going to put a series of sizes of tags, and I want that first one to be able to go through. So I'm not doing any of the bottom except the last one. Okay. So we have number one in place. Let's put in number two. And you just kind of have to guesstimate. You want this to be covered up on this page. And you want this side to be lower than that corner. But there's no set specific rule that says you have to do it a certain way. You just want it to be here and here. And then this one's going to be a little lower. So we're going to put our fourth one and see we're going to cover it up just a little bit. And figure out where you want to put them before you do it. Glue only the outside edges. Make sure they're covered with each other. Okay. And we'll do our fourth one. The little bitty side and a little longer side. And 
we, the big part on this one is to make sure that this corner covers where that meets. So it doesn't matter exactly as long as it's covered. Make it straight and stick it down. Then your bottom one, the last one, is going to cover up all of the other stuff. So we'll glue this one in. We'll glue this one in. And we'll glue the bottom. Otherwise, all of our little tags will fall out the bottom. And we don't want that to happen. Even up with the bottom. And if we've measured correctly, every corner should be covered. And ready to go. And we did. Yay! Yay, 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 Okay, so now we have one, two, three, four, five pockets. So let's set this aside for a moment. Let me wash my hands again so I can hopefully try to keep from getting so much ink all over everything. I have some baby wipes back there, but they're kind of hidden, so... I didn't want to have to dig for those right now. Okay, now here are our tags. I cut all of them the same width. They are three and one half inches wide. Okay. The first one is eight and a half. The second one is seven. The third one is five and a half. The fourth one is four. And the bottom one is two and a half. So basically, I started with eight and a half and I subtracted an inch and a half off of each tag so that there's some uniformity to them. Now, when you get ready to do these, Let's kind of wipe this off a little bit and uh, see if we can clean up some of the dribbles from ink while ago. And you don't see any and you think it's clean already. Look at all that. That came off. So let's get our paper here. It's clean. We're going to work on our tags. Now, when you get ready to do these tags, my suggestion is that you round the corners on the bottom because to me it seems like the rounded corners um, slide into these pockets a little better. So let's cut all of those and I use the big round one. You can use any one you want if you want it to be fancy. You can use a fancy one. I'm not very fancy. So we'll cut all of these at one time. Well, I mean, not at one time. We'll cut them one at a time, but we'll cut them all at the same session. Okay? So we have those. Now, if you wanted to, you could get a punch and punch the tops and make them look cute. But because this one is kind of distressed uh, using old book pages, um, I don't want, it, don't want the text to get too terribly fancy. So, we're just going to leave them plain. Now, we can go back on the backs. Of course, I've already got ink on them. And put some of this on the back so that they all match. And that would work perfectly. So, we can do that. So, let's, uh, let's cut these real quick. Goodness. All right. So, we're going to cut three and a half, three and a quarter because we want it to be a little bit smaller. So we're going to do three and a quarter strips. There's one. There is another three and a quarter. And another three and a quarter. That takes care of our width. Save that, you never know. The first one, we're going to make eight and a half, and my little 
cutter doesn't go quite that big, so I'm going to measure it right down here. And it is eight and a half. Okay, so the paper is eight and a half. The next one we're going to do at seven. And this lined paper is awesome. I don't know, I think I told you that I print this myself and um, use it all the time. I have some for sale in my online store. So if you want to check that out, now there's our seven one. We need a five and a five, a four and a half, I think. Seven. Four and a half. Get it out. Then this one might be long enough. see what I've done here because I've screwed something up. This one goes here. That one is a little long so we're going to cut it off just a little bit. Perfect. For one. little bit long, so we'll cut this one off just a little bit. Perfect. Then we have this one. And this is the one we messed up. So, we can use this one here. Again, it's a little bit long. And it's a little bit long because I rounded those corners. And so it kind of looks looks a little different but that's okay and then we have this little one and we can do it at two and a half so we'll cut this a little less than two and a half we'll try it at about like that be perfect and then we need just another little piece so we'll put another another three and a quarter and this one <coughs> was five and a half that's where I messed up I tried to make it five and it should have been five and a half so we're gonna do five and a quarter. See how that works. And that's going to be awesome. Let's cut off just a little bit more so we won't have to cut off those corners. Okay. So there we go. Now then, it's up to you whether or not you want to ink these. Because I have inked everything else, I'm going to go ahead and ink them around the edges. So it won't take but just a second. And we'll get these inked around the edge and attached. And you can see what our little project is going to look like. One, there's two.
time. Now, if you wanted to leave a little bit of length on these and also cut the bottom and round the corners, you can certainly do that. Um, that that's entirely up to you. You could just round the corners and then nest this right down in that corner. But I kind of like with uh, the, the points kind of being there. Kind of adds a little bit of extra. So, all righty. Let's try gluing these down. And at this point, I'd really just kind of find the cleanest, the dirtiest side. And put it on there. And there you go. There's one. <coughs> Here's the second one. one. <coughs> Excuse me again. I would say that I would wait and make videos when my allergies are better and my cough is gone and all that junk in my throat is gone. But the doctors have told me I have allergies 24-7-365, so I don't know when I would ever get around to it. So I just sniff and try to deal with it. So I apologize if I offend you. Um, we are trying to <laughs> to get by here. So okay, now let's do our seven inch one. Oh, got a little too much glue on that one, so we'll put that away. And those both look pretty good. It is kind of the good thing about glue stick. You can kind of wipe it off, and it's very forgiving for us people who make mistakes and then we have this one and I think we know which side we're going to put this one on aren't we <laughs> Let's put this back over here on this side We have our tags. Now then, if you want, um, and I do because I, I ink everything, you can go back and ink both sides of this. To me, it just makes it look finished, makes it look like um, a nice, a nice product. So. I like it. it looks finished. It's kind of like the hair bow in your hair. You know, you don't have to have it, but it's kind of neat. Okay. So I could wipe up any glue that we left here. Turn this one over. If you want to put something on the front of this, you certainly can. I don't usually because I don't like the bulk. Oh, 
That's not mine. This is mine. Okay, so we're going to slide this one in right here. Okay. Now, another little thing that we can do, and I have this stuff. It's, a, it's just a little cotton frayed strip. It's about maybe a half inch, I guess. Half inch strip, maybe a little more. Um, and I buy these um, on Etsy. And I cut them into little toppers. So we're going to go ahead and cut five of these. They don't have to be exact. Remember, we're working on the junk journal. And we have one more. Okay. Now, on these, you can glue. You can do whatever you want to. I like to, um, to, to find the center first and staple just one side with my tiny attacher. And then I'm going to bring this little piece back and put just a dab of Fabri-Tac on it so that it covers up the staple. Uh, some people don't mind the staples. I, it's just one of those things. Well, if I can get the glue to come out of here. It's just one of those things that I would prefer it. I think it's stopped up. I'm going to get a little pin here and see if we can open it up a little bit. Not with that one, though. Much better pretty good helping of it and stick it down it does not take long for it to adhere and now we're going to do something with that staple in a minute so we're going to put this one in here and turn it just ever so slightly we're going to get the next one, and we're going to ink. tab. You could also use pre-made tabs. You could make your own. You could use lace. You can use whatever you want. I just love this frayed stuff. It just looks awesome to me. And uh, this little bottle works great and wonderful when it's exactly full. But when there's a little bit gone out of the top of it, it wants to start over every time. So we'll stick that one down. Hold it for just a minute. It's not exactly in the middle, but it's pretty close for me. We're going to slide that one in. Do our third one.
kind of do it a little bit better in the center this time. I don't know why center is so hard for me to find, but it is. down, hold it for just a minute, and put it in our third pocket slot. And like I said, I tilt them so that they're kind of, they flow with the zigzag theme. Do our fourth one here. center staple goodness glue hold for just a minute and put it in its place our last little tag. in it, put a little glue on it, and glue it down. <coughs> and we have our last little tag. Now, I told you we were going to do something with that staple. If you see here, this page that I used on this bottom one, uh, the bottom pocket is a little narrow, so you have some white space right here. So what we're going to do is we're going to use this um, really cool ribbon. It's not ribbon. It's, well, it's ribbon. But it's plastic ribbon. And we're going to put this right here on the side. Let's see. I think two of those will work. And it makes that space there not quite as noticeable. And then we'll come over here and do this one. Okay. Kind of add a little floofy to it, but this is a very flat ribbon, so it won't won't stick up very very high in your in your book. Then we're going to cut off five little one squares. One, two, three, four, and five. And we're going to go back, and we're going to let's start up here. Put a little glue. Little glue, little glue, little glue, little glue. And we're going to take one of these and put it right over the top of that staple. Now that hides the staple and it pulls the tags in to the rest of the page. Without a lot of lot of foo foo, you know, this is supposed to be a vintage thing. It doesn't have to have a lot of stuff. Put it right there. Put it right there. And we have a beautiful page to go in our journal. Oh, let's get that one in the middle. Yeah, there we go. Now <clears throat> I have some um stuff here that I 
I purchased. It's um, a lace fabric. And I'm going to cut this little flower out of here. It doesn't take the, just a second. It's sort of a cream color. And these scissors are probably not the best to cut a dainty little project like this, but it's what I had and what I could find. So, get rid of these right here. Cut these off. I use lots of lace. I use lots of lace fabric. I use doilies. I use all kinds of lace type things. I love lace. Uh, my grandmother used to crochet when I was little and I loved it. Now that's a cream color. So we're just going to leave it. I guess we could edge up just the edges a little bit. Make it a little more distinctive. Um, as to where the flower starts and the book page starts. Put a little bit of glue right here. On this circle. Little in the dot. And lay that right there. And we could even take another little um, thing here, little square, and put this in the center of our flower. Well, not on my finger, on the flower. And there we have a very nice little foot page with some ink on our journaling. We can take our journal and... I have some really big, let me see if I can get one, really big paper clips. And uh, we can use one of these and find a page that we want. I like that blue one. Blue's not really a big color of mine, but I like it. And we can clip it in. Then you have it where you can take take it out and write on it. Use what you what however you want to use it. So anyway, that's our little tag. That's my take on Miss E's uh, zigzag journal page. So um, if you like it, give me a thumbs up. Subscribe to our channel. Check out our website at pinkdragonflywingswithaz.com, and um, I'll see you next time. Bye. Thank you.